happen differently? I mean, I've been studying AI, I'm a computer science major since the 80s, and hey, AI's been around since the 80s and earlier, but all those concepts just didn't have the compute capability. Now they do, now machine That's learning's right. on fire. That's a renaissance. Compute can help connectivity. You just mentioned the use case there. So this is powering new software applications that no one's ever seen before. That's right. How is, how is these net new workloads and applications changing connectivity? Give some examples. I mean, yeah. what are some of the things that you guys are seeing as use cases running over the connectivity? Sure, so we're seeing a lot of different use cases, and you're right, it really is transforming. I mean, uh, the, an example of this is uh, retail robotics, for instance. You know, um, uh, we're seeing re very real applications where uh, large retail customers want to drive uh, robotics in their uh, many retail store locations, but it's just not affordable to put that whole hardware software stack in every single store to run those robotics. But then if you try to run those robotics from an application that's hosted in a, in a cloud somewhere a thousand miles away, then it doesn't have the latency performance that it needs to uh, accurately run those robotics in the store. So we believe that, that uh, what we're starting to see is this transformation where applications are going to be broken up into these microservices where parts of it's going to run in the cloud core, part of it's, part of it's going to run in the prem, and yeah. part of it's going to run on the near edge where yeah. things are more efficient to run for certain, certain types it's of It's kind of like a human, you got your brains and you got your arms and legs moving exactly. around, so the brains can be in the cloud, Yes. And then the, whatever's going on at the edge is going to have more compute. All right, now mm -hmm. give some other examples. You, you and I were talking before we came on camera about video retail analytics. Right. Okay, um, pretty obvious when you think about it, but not obvious when you don't have cloud. So talk yeah. about video analytics. Yeah, that's another important driver is, is that when, with all of the AI tools that are being developed and as AI advances, and as other things, uh, technologies like machine learning advances, then uh, we want to apply AI to a whole new range of applications. So retail, uh, like video analytics, for instance, what we're starting to see is the art of the possible, is that you, you may have a retail store that has uh, 30 different video cameras spread up around its uh, store. And it's constantly monitoring uh, people's expressions, people's moods as they come in. Yeah. There's an AI sitting somewhere that's analyzing how people feel when they walk in the store yeah. versus how they feel out yeah. when they walk out. You know, are they happier when they walk out than when they walk in? Yeah. Are they really mad when they're in the waiting line someplace? Or is there a corner of the store where real time there's an AI that's detecting that, hey, there's a problem in the corner of the store because people seem like they look upset. You know, yeah. that type of analysis, you know, it's it, yeah. it can't, you don't want to feed all of that video, all those simultaneous yeah. video feeds to some AI that's sitting a thousand miles away that's just too much of a lift in terms of bandwidth and too much of a cost. So yeah. the answer is that there's this distributed model where portions of the application and the AI is acting at different locations yeah. in the network and the network is tying it all together.